Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. All right, so let's get to diagnosing and fixing the issues with this microwave. So first of all, make sure your microwave is not plugged in. If your microwave is plugged in, then you're gonna shock yourself, and that's not a good thing. So make sure your microwave is unplugged. Now, the person who I got this from said it kept blowing the fuse. So let's pull out that fuse and test its continuity, just to confirm that it's the fuse that is broken and not something else. So we will set the multimeter down here to continuity testing, and then we will set it somewhere where you can see it easy. And if you check the probes together just to make sure the multimeter is working, you can hear it beep. If you test the fuse, no bueno. Well, that means the fuse is dead, which means something else is the issue inside this uh, thing. So first of all, we're just gonna leave this fuse out and we're going to look down here to one of the most common problems of the microwave, the microwave capacitor. This microwave capacitor is an integral part to the microwave and when it fails, it can spell doom for some of the microwave components. As you can see on this schematic diagram, we have the microwave transformer that puts out the output of 2000 volts and it is connected with a capacitor and diode in a voltage doubler formation to boost the voltage from the microwave transformer from 2000 volts AC to about 4000 volts DC that feeds the magnetron. Now if this capacitor were to break or short out somehow, then it would cause the current from this microwave transformer to flow through here through the diode and to ground and that is not a good thing because it'll blow the fuse and cause too much current and perhaps blow the diode. So first off, let's pop this thing out. Just stick a screwdriver down in there and turn the screw that's holding the capacitor on. The screw will also probably be holding one end of the high voltage microwave diode. So with the capacitor out, you can unplug some of the leads that are connecting it and safely remove the whole capacitor. All right, so our multimeter is still on continuity tech, so I'm going to check the continuity of this capacitor, and that is not a good thing. This capacitor should not be shorting. The capacitor is made out of two separate plates of metal inside, and if those plates of metal touch, it no longer functions as a capacitor, but it functions as a gigantic wire and that's not a good thing. So this capacitor is most definitely bad. Now lucky for us, it lists some of the parameters on the side, it lists 1.1 microfarads and a few other parameters that we can use to help replace this capacitor. Now before we find a replacement capacitor, we need to check some of the other components in the microwave to make sure that the blown capacitor did not damage them as well. For instance, we need to check this microwave diode. So right now I'll set this multimeter to diode testing mode and we will test the diode as supposed to be tested. Not seeing anything, but this diode may have too high of a forward voltage for my uh, transistor tester or multimeter to measure. Uh, I will go test this diode in my room and see if it works. All right, so I didn't show you this little section of the video where I tested the diode, but I was too lazy to move my camera from its tripod, and so I'll basically tell you what I did. So I connected my multimeter with the positive end to the cathode of the diode, and the negative end to the anode of the diode and turned up my power supply, no current flowed, that is correct. And then I flipped it around and connected negative to the cathode and positive to the anode and I got about two amps of current through it once the power supply hit 10 volts. And that confirms that this diode is working, so we don't need to replace that. What we do need to find is a replacement capacitor. All right, so before we replace the capacitor. We need to check the microwave oven transformer to make sure that it is still properly working. For that I will set it to resistance and I will test the secondary coil. All right, we can see that the secondary coil of the microwave transformer is measuring out at about 78.5 ohms. That is correct, that means our coil is good. And that pretty much confirms that this capacitor was the only issue with this microwave. So if we replace this capacitor, we should have a perfectly functioning microwave again. Now, lucky for me, I have a ton of different microwave capacitors. This is the bad one, and this is my whole box full of microwave capacitors and other uh, AC capacitors for other purposes. Now we need to find one that relatively matches this um, capacitor rating of 1.1 microfarads at 2,100 volts. So just go ahead and take a look at some of these capacitors, and I will eventually find the correct one. Hey, look it. Those two are exactly the same. Exactly the same capacitor. It's like the same brand and it's the same uh, capacitance. So that is perfect. I will just um, put the good one in.
All right, so this is a relatively simple task. What I'm first going to do is take the original microwave diode, and I'm going to connect that back in here. Uh, that just connects to one of these prongs, and you bend that down, and you'll stick the capacitor inside this little housing. And you want to make sure that this little tiny uh, hole right there lines up with the hole on the microwave capacitor mount, because that is how it connects to ground. Because the whole chassis of this microwave is a ground, but actually it's not really ground because it is at a positive 2,000 volts to this. This magnetron actually operates at a negative potential, which is pretty interesting. So let's connect this microwave diode back in there and see what we can do. After your capacitor is back in place, you want to connect it according to the schematic diagram provided with the microwave. So as we can see, one end of the capacitor goes straight to the microwave transformer output. That will be this end on top. And one end goes to the input of the magnetron. And that is the same end that connects to the diode, as you can see. So I'll slide that in. And with that, our microwave is done, all ready to be tested out. There we go, the cap is in place, it's pretty secure, and everything's connected as it should be. So let's move up to the second most important part, replacing the fuse. The microwave will not work without a fuse. Now luckily, I have one of these boards, and notice it looks very similar to that board over there. Yes, this board is from a microwave, and almost all microwaves use the same exact fuse. This is a microwave I took apart a long time ago. Let's take the fuse out, that fuse, and go inside there. Wow, there we go. Our fuse job is complete. All right, now let's go ahead and test out this microwave. So I got a mug of water inside there just sitting, and it actually doesn't need the plate because this mug is insulating the water from the plate electrically. So let's turn on the microwave and see what we can do. All right, here we go. As you can hear, the microwave starts just fine. As you can see, we've got a cup of nice steaming hot water. Oh hot. Yeah, that's definitely steaming. Not sure if you can see that in the video, but the cup is steaming full of hot water. As you can see, this microwave works just fine. Alright guys, so uh, here's a quick life hack. So always unplug your microwave before servicing it. It's a really important thing to do. Because you see, I was moving to go zip tie this board in because I broke one of the clips holding it in. And... I forgot to unplug it. So I reached down, I touched the fuse. The fuse is live, 110 volts AC. And I have barefoot on concrete, so I am grounded very well right now. So yeah, I touched this and I got shocked. So always remember, unplug your microwave before servicing it and discharge the capacitor using some pliers or something of the sort. Just stick it in there, make sure you're touching both of the metal and discharge that. All right. Yeah, be safe whenever you're servicing anything that deals with high voltage. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. Oh, that's not good. Something happened. Ah, dang it.